<laughs> Kelly, Kelly McDonald from Accessible Media, Ringo. Accessible. Uh, yeah, yes, Accessible yeah. Media. Sir, I, I wanted to say, first of all, it's amazing. Uh, a little help from your friends, a whole bunch of great musicians and artists together. Really wonderful over the years. It's just, just magic, it seems, sir. Uh, the question I had for you is based on so many things you have done. Music, art, um, filming. Uh, but I also know about your concern about rhinoceroses, including mentioning, of course, Keith Moon, the, the gift you gave him. Yeah. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that and tell us um, how the rhinoceroses have pulled at your heart? Well, it just became one of those things, uh, hanging out one night. Keith and I realized we both loved rhinos. We don't know why. We were hanging out at night. There's the clue. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> this artist came into the office and she made farm animals, life-size, and I asked her, could you make two life-size rhinos? And uh, they did, or she did, and I gave one to Keith, and it, he had this house which was, like, had a wall and then there was like an archway and then there was the pool, and he made it, like he put it, placed it like he was walking to the pool. So the milkman in England, they deliver the milk, you know, five, six in the morning, he's coming down on his little truck going, eh, eh. <laughs> he turned around and didn't come back for days because he would, he thought, Keith has a real one in the garden. <laughs> uh, but, so that's how it happened. And on the website, I have now got Save the Rhino uh, because I thought I'd put it to some use. You know, it just had that cat looking at the little TV on my website for years. And I thought... Yeah, well, th you know, this year we're going to save the rhino. Next year we'll save something else. Uh, just put it to use and not let it lay there. So that's why it's there. It's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Derek Vanderweck, Niagara Life. Um, considering each of you has done an incredible amount of session work in producing, and considering that any one of you could be doing any number of other projects right now, what keeps each of you coming back to the all-star band? Or in Steve Lukather's Jace, joining it? I actually begged to be in this band. I'm not kidding. <laughs> did you? I bothered Dave Hart until he could get to He did some together. horrible <laughs> things exactly. to get into the I'm band. actually really dear friends with Richard and Greg. We've known each other for 30 some odd years. And I've also yeah. known all these guys. I met Todd. And I'm a big fan, obviously. And I'm honored to be here. That's how I'm here. I mean, he, Ringo was kind enough to hire me. Uh, the other point is that uh, when I was about 16, I saw the Beatles and Hard Day's Night and various things, I went, wouldn't that be a cool idea if I did something like that? So I, I told them earlier, without the Beatles doing that, I may never have done that and ended up an architect. And uh, <laughs> I'd rather do this. And, and I re reiterate what Todd said, this band is like uh, on the same page in a human level. And it's very cool, very cool to be here. Who turned it down? Yeah, right. <laughs> now, I mean, really. Uh, my, my dance card's full. I don't think I can yeah. make it. <laughs> yeah. 1964. I uh, actually blew off my old band to do this tour. They were mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyone who saw the, the Ed Sullivan show in the States, or the first time they saw the Beatles, I don't know, um, it's a little bit before your time. Anyone who saw that February night and can say that did not change their lives, was unconscious, or wasn't born. It changed my life, and this is a dream I get to have. As Ringo said, he's living the dream. I live the dream every time I hear he, When the phone rings and I speak to him, it's the dream. You know, the, uh, the source of everything that, that all of us do up here really started with Ringo and, and the Beatles. <laughs> Seriously, as musicians. I mean, I don't think you could, you could come into this career without being influenced somehow in a, in a huge way. So all of us are really thankful that we, in a way, got our starts, you know, by listening to Beatles records and sort of, wanting to be like them. And I can't tell you what an honor and privilege and joy it is to look over to my right every night and there's my favorite drummer and good friend Ringo up there. It is just the greatest thrill in the world and to be out with Ringo and the All-Stars again. I, I think sometimes people forget what music was like before the Beatles. It was some pretty boy in front of a bunch of faceless backup musicians. And when the Beatles came out, we suddenly realized find a couple of your friends in the neighborhood, form a band, uh, have some fun, and then some of us will succeed and become r real musicians eventually. It was before that, you know, you had to be, you had to have like a good hairdo and, you know, 
a little bit of a voice and you could make it in the music business. And I remember the first Beatles album, you know, how proud they were to state that they played all the instruments, you know, they wrote all the songs together, they were self-contained unit, and that opened up just a whole world that didn't exist before. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, guys. Well, thank you. Right over here. I hope we answered your question. Ringo Scott Urquhart from CHCH News in Hamilton. I know you haven't been a big fan of the royal family over the years, but... I I'm love the royal family. <laughs> I love the queen. <laughs> hey, well, and guy, Kate, do her. Kate is adorable. <laughs> a guy you know just played a couple of songs for the queen a week or so ago in honor of Diamond did. Jubilee. And I wonder, what would your message to the queen be on her Diamond Jubilee? Have a good time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, Ray Paul, Permanent Press and the uh, National Beatles Examiner. Okay. I have, <laughs> time for your I have a, <laughs> It's time for your exam. I'm not a doctor. I have a comment and a question for Todd. Ah, good. Uh, 92 tour was one of the best ever, and, and Ringo, I hope you'll do some songs uh, from Time Takes Time, eventually put some back into the tours. That was a fantastic album, very overlooked. Todd, I met with Paul Fishkin, who founded Bearsville Re Records in L.A., and I wonder if you could confirm the story he told me that the Leroy in We Gotta Get You a Woman was named that, uh, for him. You are correct, sir. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Have a great show. Thank you. I'm glad we cleared that up. Yeah, Good afternoon, gentlemen. Randy Richards, Randy. My Magazine, Rock 95 Radio, Central Ontario. Great to be here with you, and I have a couple of questions about uh, 2012, Ringo 2012, and also uh, about the Lotus Foundation, Ringo. Yeah. Uh, I was reading that initially you were th considering naming the album 2012, and I was wondering if you were intrigued with the uh, Mayan calendar's prediction of December 21st of this year. It was a thought. It was a thought. I was going to put that big stone, you know, with the article it's on that said the world's going to end in the O of Ringo right. and then I thought no because you know what every time you do an interview that's all they'll talk about <laughs> so right. I just call it Ringo now made life a lot easier well and I know you're very excited about having your art exhibit on tour with you Can I you am I mean that started in 05 with Neil Glazer and he uh, he saw a picture I'd done it's all computer iPod or I iPhone art and it's for a good uh, cause, it's called the Lotus Foundation, which is a, a foundation Barbara and I started. And, uh, you know, if you read the, uh, the newsletter we've just put out, it's, it's quite a broad spectrum. But we, uh, you know, we're just doing the best we can. And it seems to sell on the, on the tour, so it's going for a good cause. Why not? All the best for and it gives me a lot of joy to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Susan Caddo from Hello Canada in Toronto. Hello Canada. <laughs> um, you have a song on your new album called Wonderful, um, yeah. inspired by your wife. And exactly. obviously long lasting marriages are rare in the pop world. Can you tell us a little bit about why she is wonderful and how you've managed to uh, keep your love alive for so long? Well, actually we're still together because she won't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some days I'd like to leave me, but she sticks it out. Uh, you know, I fell in love with the woman. I, you know, that's all I can say. I love the woman. I'm blessed she loves me. Uh, yeah, 30 odd years, we have a couple of bad days, I'll tell you that. But, you know, you've got to get through the bad days and uh, not make that a mountain, just the hills they are that you have to go through. Uh, yeah, so, you know, joking aside, I'm, I'm blessed that uh, Barbara's in my life, and I, I feel that today, and I felt that in 1980. So I think that's how it, as far as I'm concerned, that's how it's, it's lasted for me. Thank you. you know. and, and now the last question, right here, the last question. For the Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Joe Crawford from Remick TV and Joe Crawford Live. Um, first of all, Ringo, uh, Bill Pinckney's, the original Drifters, say hello to you. Good. I guess they uh, told me they were inducted the same time as the Beatles were in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But I want to know why you guys keep on coming to Niagara Falls, Canada for uh, the only Canadian city for the tour. And quickly, gentlemen, can you tell us what you like about Niagara Falls? The well, food. 
We love Niagara <laughs> Falls and, you know, we, we see the, the falls out of our window. It puts me in my place every morning when I think, oh, I'm such a big shot. You open the curtains and there's Niagara Falls. It, it right-sizes me immediately, so the day starts off good. Uh, but we're blessed that Larry, uh, you know, likes us to come here. I love to come here, and it's been a great combination uh, that we rehearse here, and then we do the shows here, so it's good for the band. We get to know each other. We actually can find our rooms, and, uh, you know, we're well looked after, so it's great. So that's why I keep coming back. And... Um, yeah, I thought we played a couple of other gigs in Canada one year. Don't remember. I you don't remember? I don't remember. You don't remember. What about me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go down the line. He's got lots of questions. Start a great. Well, I had pretty much the same answer, unfortunately, for me. It's like uh, I've never seen Niagara Falls, and uh, they brought me to the room, and uh, and I opened up the window, and it's like, right there and and it's enormous and powerful and they said you want to go down and see the theater and I said no wait a minute uh, I'll, let me hang out here for a minute and watch this and I went down to the falls and and just caught the energy of it and stood there for 20 minutes it is so powerful it's very cool and I'm glad he likes coming here because now I got to see it <laughs> well I'm a little bit upset um, I had this brilliant idea that I was going to tightrope across Niagara Falls. <laughs> and this Melinda guy <laughs> screwed the whole thing up for me, man, you know. But no, in all seriousness, I really, it's a blast. I have the same view. It's really awesome. And uh, it's really an honor to be here in this beautiful place. Thanks. This is the fourth time I've been to the falls, Falls View. And Larry and the entire staff take such amazing care of us. Uh, we're looked after. And we love and it And Laura, don't forget And Laura. Laura. Yeah. No, we, we, they, they, you couldn't ask for, for nicer people. And the accommodations are beautiful. Well, Luke, I think the secret can be revealed that we're all going to follow the guy across the tight wire playing our instruments. I'm going in front. I'm first. Yeah. Of course. Tricycle. <laughs> I have to say, growing up in Detroit, Michigan, I have always loved the Canadians, because there's something about the people here. No, I'd always want to go over the over the Ambassador Bridge to Ontario or go to Young Street in Toronto, and there's something about Canadian people. You guys are so incredibly friendly, eh? Yeah. Really, really friendly. And we did play Calgary. Well, much like uh, Greg, I had never laid eyes on the falls until I got to my hotel room. And I pride myself on being a curious person and knowing things. And I realized the you know, extent of my ignorance when there were two of them <laughs> instead of just one. <laughs> so it was humbling for me in another way, all right? Thank you very much, gentlemen. All the best in your tour. Hey, Thank thanks you. for coming. Right. Thank you all for coming. I think that's it. it. These guys are going to start rock and roll tomorrow. And uh, again, thank you for uh, uh, enjoying this as much as we do. Okay, thanks for coming. Uh, everyone's from here, so they don't have far to go. Can we get up? Yeah. Just